Welcome to our Bach factory on Bach's Cantata 34, O Ewiges Feuer, O Ursprung der Liebe. When I hear this music, I feel already greatly inspired to talk about it with Rudolf Lutz. But what we just heard is a performance recorded 14 years ago in Trogen. Has anything changed in the meantime? Well, I think obviously yes. A little less air, a bit more belly, and a lot of experience with the pieces of Johann Sebastian Bach. And I accord with you, Schwann, it's really fantastic music, um, inspiring this Tom T. But perhaps it would be quite interesting for you, ladies and gentlemen, to get a s small overview of this cantata. Schwann, do you think you could give this to us? Let's do it. It's a short cantata, not very long. It's written in five movements. You just heard the opening choir, the uh, opening of the opening choir, which is fantastic. We will explain more about it later on. It's followed by a recitative. And then, as number three, there comes one of Bach's most beautiful arias. Are you really sure? I mean, if you think of, oh, aus Liebe will mein Heiland sterben, oh, erbarme dich, Matthew Passion, they are lovely too. But actually, Schwan, I agree with you, it's really a fabulous piece and we'll love to explain it to you. It's a lovely aria. And then comes a recitative again, which is a special recitative, we will say why. And at the end there comes a choir, not a chorale, as Bach usually does, but a choir. So this is quite a compact sort of cantata, and I would suggest that we jump in the first movement straight away. Rudy. It is O Ewiges Feuer, Ewig is eternal, so Bach sets a, a long note. O e and he does it with a trumpet, very triumphantly. And then you've got the element going ba-da-bam, ba-da-bam. It's like a little lightning. And uh, you've also got a, a bass motif. I'll play it on the piano. la da dum bum 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 pa You're always on the same chord. You've got bum ti la da di di the staying on the call is stability. I'm uh, uh, sure it's uh, also trying to depict the word eternal. And it's the eternal fire, luckily not the eternal fire of hell, but the eternal fire of love. The Ursprung der Liebe is the origin of love. And um, perhaps you've got this in the oboes at bar 15. Ra -ri -ra, ra -ri -ra, la -ra. And then this little legal part. And what do the violins play, especially the first? I'll play it a little slower. Now, Schwann, if you listen to that, what, what comes into your mind? Oh, it reminds me of certain virtuosic pieces by Bach for violin, like the partitas or even the sonatas or the concertos. Why don't you improvise something on this virtuosic sort of uh, fiery music, Rudy? Well, I'll love to do that. Would you like, to, like it in um, the three parts or the two parts? Three. Three parts, okay. He knows that three parts is more difficult than two. <laughs> I will take this idea called an invention and then I will work with this. If 
I would now uh, construct a piece, I would make here a repetition, and then a second part, I could also do it in minor. And then perhaps a da capo. And then that will be a new prelude in D major for a full temporary of clavier number three, perhaps. <laughs> Something like that. So what you just played is obviously very difficult to create. Uh, and what Bach's composed is, sounds very complex and very elaborate. I'm sure it really is, but is it perhaps based on more simple, I don't like the word simple in this context, but easier to understand principles, construction principles. Well, actually, you are quite right. When we listen to Bach the first time, a new piece, it can be overwhelmingly uh, complicated. But if you sort of start to hear the um, elements, the, you could also talk about Lego, I like to use that, the red ones, the the blue ones, the green ones, I tried to show you. I, you remember? Ba -da -bum. And then the bass. Di -di -di -bum -bum -bum. And then. Ba -ba. And then you had this. If I picture out the elements, it's possible to recognize ah, here they come again. And Bach, uh, in a long piece, uses these elements and also in the same combination of those elements and he puts them together, and then he takes the choir to it, then you've got the trumpets playing it, then sometimes it's the oboe taking it. It's this changing which makes the thing very interesting, but if you listen to the elements, and perhaps I would propose we listen to the beginning of the cantata once again, and you see if things have changed for you, ladies and gentlemen, when you listen it the second time. Let's do that by listening to the reprise, to the Da Capo section, which is a repetition of the beginning. After a B part with another perspective on the main theme of this first movement. <laughs> And after this incredible entry choir, a recitative. And I don't know if you understand me a little, sometimes I've got the itch to say, oh, okay, I want to go to the next aria and I could skip the recitative. Uh, Schwann, how is that for you? Well, you know, if we were to confess ourselves, I would have to say yes. I sometimes skip the recitatives too and go to the next aria. But, 
this is a very important recitative because there is at least one idea that seems to me very central. Do you think you could give us an overview of uh, this recitative? What, what is it telling us? Well, the recitative is now, it turns personal, you know. It turns personal because what he's saying is, Lord, I'm talking to God directly, and this is very important. I'm saying, you say you want to be with me, you want to be with us. And so, if this is the case, then come and live with me, reside within me. What a, what a, what a message, isn't it? Isn't that the central idea of Christianity? that God is not sort of outside in the universe, but He is with us and lives with us. And where does He live in us? Here is the heart, the temple. Ladies and gentlemen, did you see what I put on today? It's also a Bach cantata, it's 147. Um, can you read it to us in German, please? Herz und Mund und Tat und Leben. Di, 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 di. Exactly. And how would you translate that? Heart, literally, and mouth, and fact, or act, and life. But this is probably an allegory for something else. Actually, it means this enthusiastic fire, like we heard it in the first choir. That we do something with our heart, that we say something, we confess something, we do it, and, and it's our life which com is committing this commitment for, for God and his, and his story. And I think the idea is really beautiful. You, you said it to us. Um, God, please, you told us in all those psalms, I want to be with you, so come down, and I want to have you, I want to feel you in my heart. Yeah? And that's why a recitative is actually in, in normally any case a very important uh, vehicle of transmitting uh, a content. So we had this um, fiery furnace, the heaven glowing, um, the, the enthusiasm, and now actually in the recitative we know it's something which wants to come to us and now we realize it's Whitsuntide, it's Pentecost because the, the Evangelium, the, the Gospel says, if you love me, Jesus says, if you love me, you do what? You do what I told you. And uh, God and I will come and we will dwell in your heart. I think I'll, I'll play a few bars of it, of this recitative. It's a terribly, terribly difficult recitative. It goes up to the high B. And that is, of course, also for a tenor. Uh, I would say, like a Mount Everest. Herr, unsere Herzen halten dir ein Wort der Wahrheit für. Du willst den Menschen gerne sein. Interesting. It's a dark, minor part. You want to be you love to be with human beings. Du willst bei Menschen gerne sein. Drum sei das Herz dein. Herr. That's that high one here. Ziehe gnädig ein. Always, if we have a view at the recitatives, we can follow word by word and then see what Bach sets, a high note, a low note, an intense chord, a dissonant chord. And that's quite difficult to have this in English because normally you haven't got the same words for the same note. So perhaps, if I may be, be now your, uh, your teacher in, in explaining things, I would uh, first understand the English text, then I try to find the translation, the German text, know what which word means, and then seeing what Bach does. A hard task, but I think uh, it, uh, it's a good, a good idea. You will come into the way of the art of recitative with Johann Sebastian Bach. When you work on recitatives, Schwann, how do you proceed? Well, of course, would proceed understanding the text. I mean, that's uh, the, the very uh, first task we have to do. And there are usually very strange intervals in the recitative. So um, if I was to sing a recitative, I would try and do it in a way as it were spoken. 
first of all, in order to fit in these movements of the text. That's a good idea. Do that perhaps for this uh, recitative in um, well, the first sentence in German. In German. And then I will do put it, I'll try to put your, um, your words into Bach's music. Herr, unsere Herzen halten dir dein Wort der Wahrheit für. Is, is Wort important word or Wahrheit, uh, truth? I think Wahrheit, truth is more important. Perhaps you could now think you were an old, uh, you were an old reciter, and you would say it in very solemn words once again. Herr, unsere Herzen halten dir dein Wort der Wahrheit für. Listen to what Bach does. Herr, unsere Herzen halten dir dein Wort der Wahrheit für. And you see, now you find the interpretation of Bach. He doesn't say Wahrheit is his important word, but das Wort. So I think Schwann's idea is, is perfect. You might be a singer. Why not try it like that? That you recite the words and understand the words, and then perhaps even try to make your recitative your same. You do it, and then afterwards look what Bach does, and you will understand him completely differently. Yeah, I think that's enough for a recitative. Schwann, why not talk about your favorite aria? One of my favorites. And so why don't we jump in the aria? If you could kindly play us or improvise a little bit on this wonderfully pastoral character of the, of the aria. It's in A major, and it sounds like this. <laughs> What does the second violin do? The same movement but in the contrary direction. The viola is a Basis. A bow vibrato. And the flutes, an octave higher. Schwann, when we were preparing our uh, introduction, he said, it reminds me of Brahms. It's got a sort of a cradle song energy or pastoral uh, feeling. Now, Schwann, what are your impressions when you hear this music? Well, I just wanted to say, it reminds me so much of the Christmas Oratorio, the second uh, cantata. You know, the Hirtenmusik. Ah, yeah. You mean this one? Yeah. Here the angels, and then the shepherds. With a fall of rose. You're right, it's, it's very similar. Interesting, actually. Uh, the text we have is Blessed are you, O chosen souls, whom God has chosen as a dwelling place. The same idea you were telling us, uh, Schwann, that God comes and He wants to be with us and He wants to find the place, and that's our hearts. Uh, a marvelous part of music. It reminds me, by the way, here's a picture, Basler Münster. This is Abraham and the chosen souls. Perhaps you remember the, the um, spiritual. Oh, rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham, rock my soul of the bosom of Abraham, rock my soul. The bosom of Abraham, oh, rock my soul. 
also a music going to the heart. And isn't it lovely to hear that? God wants to come in our heart. Schwann, your thoughts, your opinion, perhaps also a bit of the history of this aria. Well, the aria is, has a particular history, and of course the whole cantata does too, because a lot of the cantata is actually not new at all. It was composed years before of these um, uh, Pentecost composition. It was actually a wedding cantata. It was composed for the wedding of a clergyman yeah. who was about to be married. And so the original text does not say, Wohl euch ihr auserwählten Seele, your chosen souls, but Wohl euch ihr auserwählten Schafe, the sheep. Of course, the community was very happy for their um, hirt to get married. So if I read the original text in German, we will find quite an interesting story from the Bible. Wohl euch ihr auserwählten Schafe, die ein getreuer Jakob liebt. Sein Lohn wird dort am größten werden, den ihm der Herr bereits auf Erden durch seine Rahel Anmut gibt. So there you go, you've got Jacob and Rahel. And you haven't got any more souls, you've got the sheep. So uh, Jacob came along on his wandering, his hiking tour through the whole half world. There he saw the sheep and he saw Rahel, a beautiful young girl. So he thought, why not do a bit of work here? Perhaps I could ask Jacob if I might marry her. He did that, and after long years with a lot of complications, you can read it in the Bible, he was married with Rahel. And of course here, it's the picture, Jacob is the clergyman, the sheep, the community, and Rahel is the beautiful wife of the clergyman. So let's now listen to the real aria performed by Margot Oitzinger. If I wouldn't have known that it is a wedding cantata, I don't think I would have found out that this text is not the original text, but a parody. I'm very impressed about the writer of this libretto. You mentioned the importance of the following recitative, which is answered then after that, not with the chorale, but with the short choir. Absolutely, because this recitative contains now the three keywords of the cantata. We had in the beginning the fire, then we had the love, and now we have peace. And so, of course, God is the peace bringer, the one who can um, heal us from everything. And so the recitative remains for a little bit with this idea of the aria of God's residence, God's 
apartment, the Wohnung Gottes, so to speak. That's nice. Like that. <laughs> the residence or the apartment of uh, God's apartment. in our heart. Yeah. In our heart. And God pours his uh, Segen excessiveness, he shoot it out. Yeah. That's his blessings. His yeah. blessings. Yeah. So this is something that I find uh, very, very important prior to the key sentence, Friede über Israel. Yeah. And he does it in a recitative, and I'll just show you this pouring blessing. It's very beautifully depicted, like Bach always does those things. It's a bass recitative. He sings, So muss er auch den Siegen auf sie schütten. This uh, movement from above. And then the ending goes. Der Herr ruft über sein geweihtes Haus das Wort des Siegens aus. And then choir, trumpets, oboes, violins sing all together. Friede über Israel. Cantata could be finished, but no, here comes the orchestra and does. A, a fulminant uh, browsing piece of music. Schwann, perhaps a few words to the text and to the atmosphere. Well, the word within the text of the choir that I find more impressive, of course, is the Wunderhänden. This wonderful, wonderful meaning, really able to make wonders, the hands uh, of God. We have to thank Him for all of this. The Wunderhänden, that's an, an, a new word. It's not well known. Now one could say the, the miracle hands of God, or the hands of miracle making. Yeah? I think the best thing we could now do would be to listen to the recitative, Friede über Israel and to the final choir of the cantata, really. What do you think? That's a good idea, and we would love to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. Erfällt sich Gott die eigene Hütten, die er mit Heil bewohnt, so muss er auch den Segen auf sie schütten. So wird der Sitz des Heiligtums belohnt. Der Herr ruft über sein geweihtes Haus das Wort des Siegens aus. Ja.